Commercialism most widely came into fruition during the post-World War II years in the United States and was seen as the key to advancement as a society. It provided the necessary accessibility of common goods to the lower and middle classes, and it also allowed for the middle class to grow significantly. These advancements led to the dawning of our commonly misconceived nickname, the affluent society. This, of course, is a euphemism, in that although our society does thrive and is a wealthy one, we are ruining our own individuality and health for the sake of conformity, and also sacrificing the health of our ecosystem. As commercialism began to spread worldwide, artists such as Michelle Tufery from New Zealand began to create social commentary on the threats of commercialism. Tufery, not knowing how to speak, read, or write until the age of six, refers to art as his first language. Because of this, he aims his artwork at children. He wants his message to be universally heard as well as understood. His most famous piece, Pesupa Lua Afe, which he created in 1994, seeks to examine and warn citizens of the harsh effects of commercialism, the upsetting tolls which it takes on the health of the people and the damaging effect of the environment. This series of life-sized bulls are typically displayed in Pacific museums, but they were also at times displayed on crowded city streets in order to reach all, even those who would generally not attend a museum. During these events, the bulls were retrofitted with fireworks and foggers and were engaged in fully-fledged bullfights. I suppose in order to understand the true deeper meaning and context of this art piece, you must understand what the title means. Pasupo is Samoan for pea soup, which was the first type of canned food stuff that was introduced to the Pacific Islanders. However, over time it has become a term used to describe any and all canned foods consumed there. Lua Afe translates to 2000. This refers to the place that processed items and commercialism holds in our modern society. The cans that make up these bowls are of processed corned beef. Traditionally, corned beef was given as offerings and gifts to people on their wedding or birthdays. Once a delicacy and luxurious food, which would be considered as valuable as a beautiful mat or decorated bark cloth, corned beef had now become not only common, but a food high in cholesterol and saturated fats, and a main cause for the high rates of diabetes and obesity in the Pacific Islands. Because of the introduction of commercialism, healthy diets that were originally high in vegetables and seafood eventually gave way to cheaper ones chocked full of unhealthy fats and preservatives. Tufery's work, however, does not only seek to comment on the negative effect which commercialism has on individual health, but also on its ecological impact and the introduction of food sovereignty in the Pacific Islands. To understand this, we must look at the form of this bull. This bull is nothing like a real cow. Its hardness and rigidity contrast with the softness and movement of actual cattle. This exemplifies the capacity of the introduction of cattle into the ecosystem and the effects of this particular industry to destroy the fragile island environment. This piece also somewhat relieves another issue faced by the islanders as a result of commercialism. Disposal of the sheer amount of cans brought into these societies. Tufer uses cans not only to send a message, but to upcycle the waste as opposed to putting it into some sort of rubbish disposal. Pasupa Lua Afe effectively asks its audience important questions. What use do countless empty tin cans hold? And more importantly, what use were the ill health causing foods that were contained within them? Could not the land used for cattle be more effectively used to grow healthier indigenous foods instead? Food sovereignty is yet another issue addressed by Tufri. Food sovereignty can be described as the right of a nation and its people to choose who controls how, where, and by whom their food is produced. This issue is very prevalent in the Pacific Islands today and can be seen in epidemics such as the taro leaf blight outbreak of 1993, in which endless field harvest and commercialism led to an outbreak of the disease, killing thousands of plants or the drift net fishing disaster that continues today, which is rapidly depleting fish stocks. Food sovereignty in the Pacific Islands is causing the healthiest and best supplies of vegetables and seafood to be sent to Western countries, and the indigenous peoples are left with the canning meat. The health of the islanders is being toyed with and sacrificed all for the sake of capitalism and commercialism. Food sovereignty is better seen, however, in Tufri's piece, Asi Asi II which depicts a yellowfin tuna made from tin mackerel cans, which is a staple food in the islands. About this piece, Tufri wrote, 
Is it coincidental that significantly increasing health and dietary problems amongst Pacific Islanders has occurred during the same period that their premium fishery catches are exported? And at the same time, locals have experienced explosive growth of canned and other imported products flooding into the Pacific? Like Pasupalua Afi, these fish also have another function. They are conventional fish smokers and were used to smoke fish at the opening of his galleries. The scaly feel of Pasupalua Afe is even better understood in these fish, for obvious reasons. The scale of this piece differs from that of the other piece. While Pasupalua Afe is life-size, this is extremely oversized, which exemplifies the ever-growing issue of his art presents. The issues are quite literally larger than life. Although at first glance, Tufri's work seems like a form of pop art, or an homage to Andy Warhol, it is impossible to understand his work in a strictly Western context. Tufri's work manages to go deeper into the idea of conformity and commercialism than any pop artist of the 1950s and 1960s could have ever dreamed to do.